Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Antuliatos and brought to you by his book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages, everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, PEDs, that is available on Amazon.com. You can also get my book on Amazon.com, Real Bodybuilding. And before we get started, guys, subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed, like the video if you like it, share it on your platforms, ring that notification bell. And now all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome Big Daddy. Dr. George Tuliatos. What's up, George? I'm good, Ron. Yeah, you In one week, Olivia will be here, sir, yeah? Time yeah. To fly yeah. yeah, we're recording. This is Sunday. Sunday. You leave on Tuesday? I live, on, I live on, on Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this was my first shirt that I bought. My first Olivia, actually, when I first met you, Steve also, and uh, Giles. Yeah. Yeah, it was in, in uh, the Orleans. That's right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going this year, but I have to hear your review next time, next show about how you like the new venue, the new hotel, all that stuff, because it seems like it's going to be amazing from all the videos and the pictures I've seen, this resorts world. Actually, I put in book at the, at the resort, so I'm, I'm at the Hilton's, but it's half a mile far. Okay, yeah. It's crazy that they didn't have um, booking from, uh, from Wednesday, but it had from Thursday, so I had to be there on Wednesday. Uh. And they didn't have uh, available rooms uh, anyway. Wow. This will be my third uh, in a row Olympia and my fourth uh, totally. And it's, this will be also my third Olympia University. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that is uh, an educational, a series of educational seminars. Yes. Olympia University, expert mm -hmm. from all different fields. You got Rick Collins, the, the steroid lawyer. You, you got all kinds of experts in their field speaking. You have a chance to get an almost like a college education in two days' time. It, it's pretty amazing. I don't know in Europe now, as we speak, he's in Germany or, or Netherlands, and he will fly next Friday to to Olympia. He will appear on Saturday, coming straight from uh, Europe. Who's that? Rick Collins. Oh, Rick Collins. Oh, yeah, he gets around. All right. Oh. So uh, before we get into any questions, we have to talk about the big breaking news yesterday morning. Nick Walker and his coach Matt Jansen put out a video explaining that he was dropping out of the Olympia, which I knew about a week ago, but I couldn't say anything. Uh, and they, they gave some kind of weird answers that, you know, he said his, he was, his body wasn't responding. He was clearly very overweight. I think he said he was 280 pounds, but you could see from his face, his midsection was just huge. You could see he wasn't in any kind of shape. Uh, and they said stress and things like that. But, you know, what do you? I, I want to hear your your opinions, your your theories. What do you think is really going on with Nick? Why do you look at fire? Uh, the last posting was from September 27. He looked really good. I mean, he was prepared, preparing, and he said, "I love when, not to count me. That gives me more drive, you know, more motivation." He, and also, Jay Cutler had a had a show recently saying that he counts on a Walker because he's very dedicated, you know, very hardcore. And we've seen. Uh, an excellent walker two years ago in Vegas when he was third. But apart from the speculation about, uh, you know, health issues and stress into the organs, I think perhaps it was a thing of ego that he couldn't beat uh, Derek or Harry, you know, coming again third. Hmm. So definitely he wanted to win, but uh, we know that also Derek and Harry are unbeatable, untouchable in a good day. They have a whole package. Yeah. Uh, I was saying that uh, he was uh, pathway. Yeah, I, I bet that they decided last week and he bulked up again. I mean, he, he had a rebound. We know that they suffer from this diet for months and weeks. And I guess he had large chip meals afterwards and he rebounded. He had a lot of carbs and salt. Mm. That's why he looks now kind of uh, bulkier. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to find the truth, but to me, he was definitely going to be, he could beat Samson, okay? We know that he's the most damn impact guy, uh, high to weight, and if we neglect the varicose veins from Neath and below, yeah. he looked very good, um, excellent legs, of course, and the upper department is also very good. Uh, now, of course, the, the situation is just like last year when we didn't have Rami and Walker. 
So I believe the top three will be, will be identical like last year. Okay. Uh, and then perhaps we have Brandon and then Andrew and then um, Labrada and uh, Bonac. That's my top eight. Okay. Yeah, we because last year, I mean, the week before the show, he had this tear in his hands. He was, he was very close. Yeah. Okay. And he was perhaps a favorite because he, Hattie, and Derek are the short guys of five, seven, you know, the same structure. And uh, as a matter of fact, last year I approached him and I told him, uh, I wish he a speedy recovery. I hope this will make you stronger, you know? And he said, yes, of course. He has the mindset. He came back, but. It's a shame, you know, taking all those years and preparing one year and the week before the show to, to, to decide uh, to, um, you know, call out from the Olympia. So better do it one month before, two months before, but not now. I mean, it's such a waste. Like running a marathon and retire from the last kilometer or the last mile, you know? Yeah. You, you're right. I mean, these were – he wasn't posting – you know, normally he would have been posting full body pictures and, and posing videos, and he hadn't been doing that. You can see here he's just showing his legs. He always had a shirt on. So I don't know. I, I do think his body wasn't responding. To me, he looks like here. This was a couple weeks ago. He looks smaller. Smaller? So I, 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 smaller. Yeah, I, I, I he's, really, he's not bulky, you know, to look small. I mean, he could look flat because of the low carbs, but he's yeah. 5 or 4% body fat, you know? Yeah. I mean, so what do you, you know, it's impossible to know his health situation and yeah. we have no idea, but I, I, I don't, I don't know if it's a health situation. If it is, I hope he, he takes care of it. He's a young guy and people are saying he should quit. He should hang it up. He should retire. I think he's only 31 years old. Mm. He's just getting started. Um, I would hate to see him retire. He's not going to retire. Uh, as far as the thing about him quitting, because he didn't think he could win. I, I don't believe that. I believe he's a fighter. He believes he can win the Olympia. He's a very confident guy. Um, yeah. I, I just Great. wonder. I, I really think his body just was not getting in shape for whatever reason. The shape he needed to be in the, for the Olympia. If he was any any hope of beating, you want to beat you want to beat Hadi Chupan. You want to beat Derek Lunsford. You better be shredded because those guys come in shape. Yeah, he couldn't beat them two years ago. Like he was exceptional, okay? And they were very close, very, very close. Come on. Yeah, yeah. So if you're a fan of walking, you would say he deserved to win two years ago. You know, the perception is very close. Yeah. But you know, as as a doctor and someone who's worked with a lot of enhanced athletes, what are some reasons that a body might not be responding to to prep? No, to the food retention is up to the kidneys. Perhaps you got an intramuscular abscess in his glute that is so nasty now that needs to be surgically operated. Mm. Yeah, just about that also. Yeah, we'll never know. Yeah, that was the last show. So. You know, you pose and your trunk is very uh, narrow. You know, then you see the nasty abscess. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, it's there's so many possibilities, and uh, he's not going to tell us that. And, and why would he? You know, that's that's really. Oh, no I mean, his diet didn't. Uh, work well the last couple of weeks and now he's rushing and he cannot make the proper weight to be shredded to the glutes yeah maybe i mean it's a shame because this is a guy with millions of fans but, but you said yesterday in your in your, in your video that in mm. your pro he didn't look as good as um two years ago perhaps he was not 100 percent shredded you know yeah not a twin derek or harry and it was very close with the other guy which is a shame because He's supposed to be top three in the world, okay? Back right. then, another guy, come on. Yeah, I mean, if, if I don't know. I, I think you're right. I think he was in good shape a week or two ago, and they made the decision not to do the show, and then he just started eating bad food. Oh, yeah, food. That, that's the case of he's bloated and bloated now. Because there's no – because he looks so – he looks fat. His gut was out to here. His face was all swollen up. It looks like a rebound, like you said. When we diet and you eat a bunch of food and have a bunch of salt and fluid, you puff up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're a bound. You're a bound. So, yeah, I mean, I wish him the best. He's He's a kind of injury, let's say, Henry, in the umbilicus, you know, in the abdominals. Hmm. Uh, I believe he would have said that. It's not a shame to have a Henry, you know what I mean? But other things like uh, kidney issues or intramuscular abscess, 
this is something not to reveal. Right, right. I mean, there's a lot of things that are none of our business. It's just he's he's a celebrity in our world. He's he was top three in the world. People want to know what's going on. And... He was very promising. He would just like Dallas, you know. Mm, yeah. And you feel on the block that I mean, he was very promising. He's late twenties, mm -hmm. and he was ready to win the show or top three. You know, you, we rarely see that below your thirties to be uh, top three in the Olympia. Yeah. So, you know, he's still got time. He's still a young, young guy. He's got plenty of time. So uh, I wish him the best. I hope he takes care of whatever's going on, comes back strong next year. Question for you, though. Do you think he should get a special invite to the Olympia? I, next year? Yes, I, I supported that for, for this year also. Mm -hmm. I mean, Dan Solomon and Jake Goodwood love athletes like him. Okay, so why not to come? Come on. I mean, the other athletes are going to get mad because they have to qualify. So, well, but, but it also happened with uh, Shadi Van Milan. You remember that? 2019 yeah. special invitation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we know that Nicky is a celebrity. He has 1.5 million fans. Oh, and yeah. he had a factor for the audience. Yeah. I mean, Big Big Rami got a special invitation in 2020, and he won. He won the Olympia. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get to some questions. Here's a good one. Equipoise, very popular drug, especially among powerlifters. Is it kidney toxic? And it's been known to increase your hematocrit. By what mechanism does it have the most potent red blood cell production? Why does it do that? Well, kidney toxic is something that increases blood pressure, just like trembolone, for instance. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Now, equipoise is notorious for increasing the erythropoiesis, which is based on EPO production. So that's what it does. It kicks EPO. Basically, all steroids do, all the androgens do, but uh, equipose is actually something for the catalyst, you know, and perhaps it increases also caloric need. They say it increases your hunger, yeah. your appetite, because it increases also perhaps muscle growth and this stimulates BMR. Um, but perhaps because it's supposed to increase the size of the catalyst, then it's very potent, also boosting. The, the EPO, and then, of course, this, uh, just like the anadrol, it um, will kick your hematocrit and hemoglobin, of course. Yeah. Somebody corrected me because I, I said on a previous episode that it was developed for horses, and they said, no, it was actually made for humans, and then it's... No, a this is the, the, the class, I mean, from South America. And uh, yes, uh, Ecuador, I think it was the real deal, Equipos. Argentina Gan also. Ganabal. Do you remember Gan Gan yeah, Gan 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 I used to get yeah. that. It came in a big jug. It was 50 milligrams per, only 50 milligrams yeah. per milliliter. You had to yeah, you so you much could, you could take a lot of oil. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Next question. We've talked about the difference between injecting subcutaneously and intramuscularly. Uh, so you said before that injecting subq is as effective as I am. But the yeah. results take longer to see. Uh, so it should be subcutaneous a large a large amount of oil because it will create lumps. Ah, right. Yes, we do it for TRT and actually for propionic testers because you inject every other day a small amount. Hmm. Either with uh, with a CPONate or anything, you can only inject uh, subcutaneously easily because you do it once or twice a week and you need to inject a lot. Injecting a lot under your skin will create a lump. All right. And mm -hmm. if you're if you're lean, it's nasty. But mm -hmm. in the lot there's a lot of space, you know, to to throw that oil. So I guess propionate injecting 0.1 or 0.2 the most subcutaneously is the only thing that works. Okay. Now, does that true? Did, I don't remember you ever saying that. Sub Q injections, the results take oh, longer. Uh, it's lower, yes, because they're there is a poor blood supply in the septic dynasty compared to the muscle. To the muscle okay? okay, okay, that makes sense. All right, here's another over 50 gentleman like you and me. I'm 53 and train four days a week on 50 milligrams test enanthate twice per week. Is it okay, they always say, is it okay to take a couple of IUs of rapid insulin after workout shake, which contains 100 grams carbs and 50 grams whey? Yeah, you can do that. And actually, these 100 grams of carbs, I mean, fits perfectly well with somebody who's 220. Yeah. So, I mean, he says a couple. So I assume he just means like two, three, four IUs, which is a pretty small dose compared to what I've heard from Yeah, uh, I mean, 10 IUs. 10 IUs work with 100 grams of carbs. 
Yeah. I was doing 20 before the workout and 20 after the workout uh, insulin. The one time I used insulin and I, I was so fat and bloated. It was disgusting because <laughs> I was eating cookies. Milos, Milos told me uh, that was my mistake. The cookies is what screwed me up. All right. Uh, final question. Dr. O'Connor, the anabolic doc, says many struggle to regain libido after trend. Is this due to an overstimulated hypothalamus? So trend uh, is very endogenic. That means literally that it, it blocks, I mean, it occupies, it bonds very strong with the receptors in the brain, the androgen receptors, yeah. and suppresses dramatically your own production. Uh, besides, they say that it's also a progestin, so increases prolactin that may antagonize endogenous testosterone production. Um, but the more endogenic a compound is, the, the more suppression will, will have, like trembolone, halotestin, you know. Um, and then you need, as he describes in the Anabolics book, double amount of testosterone to kick your sex drive, okay? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, trend has this reputation of making you very horny when you're on it, and then... Hello, by itself? I don't think so. I mean, you need also testosterone. Yeah, Hello, sure. right? Is is it something to do with the prolactin production from trend two that affects your uh, sexual performance after? Uh, you mean it suppresses your libido? Yeah, because I yeah, if there's any pro prolactin engagement, you know, elevation. Yeah, yeah so, it can be that also, but it doesn't create any estrogens that shut off your own production, like Dianabol, for instance. Right, but I mean, is it does it work the same? You know, they, we talk about Deca Dick. Does it work the same way as Deca, where eventually? You can have erectile dysfunction if you're not careful. Yeah, they have, they have kind of trend, yes, they are processing them, increase the um, prolactin uh, under circumstances, of course. That's why with trend and DECA, you need double amount of, of testosterone. Gotcha. Cool. So uh, for those uh, for those going to the Olympia, when are you going to be speaking at Olympia University this week? So it's Friday, it's Friday, uh, eight o'clock in the morning, you know. Yeah. And then on Saturday. The round table is one. It's eleven o'clock. I'm sorry, in the morning. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna have a three o'clock uh, a live interview with Monica Brandt. Oh wow, Monica yeah. Brandt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The older guys know who that is. The young guys are like Monica Brandt. Who's that? Google Monica Brandt, guys. She was the queen of fitness for many years. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So uh, I'm very sad that I'm not going, uh, George. But I'm so happy that you are, and you're gonna have a great time. It's going to be an amazing contest. It's too bad we don't have Nick Walker, but we still have the best bodybuilders in the world. Uh, every division, Dan Solomon, Jake Wood, Tarek, they all put a huge production together. So, yeah, I, I have a great time for me, George. Have an awesome time. Uh, Thank I, you. I, I How many Olympias have you been uh, presented? How many Olympias have I gone to? Have you been, yeah. I've only missed maybe four since 1991. Oh. So I've been to about 30 of them, I guess. Wow. Yeah, my first one was Lee Haney won his eighth in 91 in Orlando. That was my first Olympia. As a journalist? I, I was At that one, I was working for a TV production because it was on ESPN that year. We made a one-hour TV special out of the Olympia. Yeah, I didn't become a journalist until years, years later. Uh, my first MD, first Olympia I covered for, like MD, was probably 2002, 2003. Mm. Yeah, up until then I was just going as a fan and or I worked in the I worked in TV production. We covered uh I covered a couple of, we covered the one that Haney won for last time and I covered probably four of the Olympias that Dorian won for ESPN. I was on the, the TV crew. So, good time. Yeah. yeah. People people don't realize bodybuilding used to be on TV. It really was. Now you got pay-per-view. So, guys, yeah. get as we, as we speak about pay-per-view, uh, Phil Heath will cover that. Yeah, he should do a great job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he'll speak his mind. He doesn't care if anyone gets mad at him. So, cool, man. All right, that will do it, guys. Please, if you like the show, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it on your platforms, ring that bell. If you have questions for next week or just any comments in general, please drop a comment below here. Helps us out. We appreciate it. Dr. T, we appreciate you so much being here every week, taking time out of your schedule, changing diapers for your baby and all that stuff. Busy, busy guy, practicing medicine and helping out with his newborn daughter. So good stuff. Uh, that's it, guys. 
Thanks for watching Ask Dr. Testosterone with Dr. George N. Tuliatos. We'll see you right here next time.